Welcome to this episode of Star Wars The Classified, where we look into different facts and stories revolving around the Star Wars canon universe and lore. In today's The Classified, we'll be taking a look at the military ranking system for both the Grand Army and Navy of the Galactic Republic. Boasting one of the most impressive armies that the galaxy has ever seen, the Grand Army of the Republic saw many different changes in its military rankings throughout the Clone Wars some either made out of necessity or through the growing influence of the Jedi. Originally, for Phase 1 clone armor, the military rankings in the army were color-coded. This system was intended as a benefit for non-clones on the battlefield, as well as clones whose helmet displays were malfunctioned. During the early days of the Clone War, there were only four different officer army ranks within the Grand Army of the Republic which were Sergeant, Lieutenant, Captain, and Commander. The color green stood for the rank of Sergeant, blue for Lieutenant, red for Captain, and yellow for Commander. Along with the color-coded armor to signify the rank, these clones also had four pips appear on their chest armor which indicated officer status. However, as the war progressed, it also saw a notable change within the Grand Army, especially with new ranks being formed due to the new demands brought by the overall galactic scale of the war. The final Clone Army ranking system then became as follows. Starting as Clone Cadets, these were clones that trained on Kamino and with the sole purpose of completing their intensive combat training. Clone cadets who had reached maturity were then organized into squads such as Domino or Bravo Squad, in which they remained until finally graduating from their training and being brought into active duty. Clone privates made up the majority of the Republic's fighting force, and because of this usually took the most casualties in battle. Clone privates who showed valor and military intelligence in battle were sometimes promoted to the rank of Clone Corporal. Clone Corporals were often considered to be the second in command of a squad and had more influence than a simple private. Those who proved themselves would then be promoted to Clone Sergeant, who commanded squads of nine troopers. As one of the non-commissioned officer ranks in the Grand Army, Clone Sergeants usually found themselves in the thick of battle alongside their troops under their command. Next were Clone Lieutenants, who commanded platoons of 36 troopers and held the unit position of platoon leader. Still seen as a junior officer rank, Clone Trooper pilots were also able to hold the rank of Lieutenant as well. Lieutenants would report to Clone Captains, who commanded companies of 144 troopers. Trained in both squad and company level tactics, as well as able to handle the 74Z speeder bike, clone captains were without a doubt diverse leaders. They in turn would report to a clone commander, a rank in the Grand Army held by officers who led regiments of 2,304 troopers. The 16 clone commanders in each corps were in turn commanded by their respective Jedi General. ARC Troopers who served as commanders were known as Clone ARC Commanders and Clone Trooper Pilots could as well serve as commanders too. Clone Majors were one of the highest possible ranks achievable in the Republic military. They were in charge of aiding Clone Commanders wherever possible and were able to serve and observe battles from a turbo tank. Finally, we have the Clone Marshal Commander, the highest possible rank in the Grand Army, or at least the highest that a clone could obtain. They were usually in command of a core level formation alongside a Jedi General counterpart, where they coordinated and organized their forces, often acting as a second in command. It should also be noted that separate ranks existed within the Grand Army military, which were only appointed to that of non-clones like for example Master Chief, which was a rank in the Grand Army that oversaw the training program of the clones on Kamino, making sure only those who qualified their intensive combat training could graduate. Another high rank was that of Colonel. Colonels were not generally known to participate in combat, and instead served as battlefield strategists and high commanders, which they analyzed enemy terrain and plotted attack plans. Colonels who excelled in this would in turn be promoted to Brigadier General, and just like with the clones, Brigadier Generals worked alongside and took orders from that of Jedi Generals. 
In addition, with the change of ranking structure, the use of color-coded ranks as well eventually fell out of use. Largely due to the Jedi having encouraged the clones to express their own individuality. As a result, the Grand Army gradually adopted a new system in which clones customized their armor with unique color schemes and markings. Now instead of a color signifying a rank, it simply determined what unit structure a clone belonged to, with officers getting a custom armor design to still stand out from the rest of their troops. This liberal ranking use of identification carried on to Phase 2 armor, and even though much still remained the same, officers this time around were at least granted an optional insignia plaque on their chest to indicate their ranking. Only two types of rank insignias were used in Phase 2 clone armor, with the first plaque containing orange, blue, black, and white pins. It was the most common and generally used to indicate officer status. This was typically worn by any high-ranking officer, ranging from clone captain to clone commander. Insignias with pins of blue, orange, blue, and blue on the other hand were the rank insignia for Martial Commander, the highest possible rank for a clone in the Grand Army. Rank insignias like these were incredibly helpful when dealing with non-army personnel, or beings from non-Republic worlds who otherwise would be unfamiliar with the Republic rank structure, and thus not be aware of which clone was in a position of authority. The Jedi themselves would also command their own rank structure within the Grand Army, but unlike the clones, it was fairly simple. The lowest rank for a Jedi was Jedi Commander, which was a title given for Jedi Padawans. The rank of Jedi Commander granted them authority over the clone troopers including clones of higher rank like clone captains. However, a Jedi Commander was subordinate to a Jedi General which was a high-ranking Jedi military officer. This title was reserved only for Jedi Knights and Masters, and gave them the highest authority possible within the Grand Army. As generals, the Jedi had various wartime responsibilities, such as leading troops onto the battlefield or coordinating strategy with the Supreme Chancellor. While the army focused on ground operations, everything in the skies and space was the duty of the Republic Navy, the naval warfare branch of the Republic military. In charge of space operations, it therefore possessed its own ranking structure, which in itself would act as the roots for the later Imperial ranks. Corporals who wore a single road plaque of one blue tile followed by two red were the lowest rank in the Republic Navy. The ranks that followed were Lieutenant, Senior Lieutenant, Captain, Senior Captain, and then the highest attainable being Commander. Majority of these were occupied by clones with some non-clones serving as well. The top ranks such as Colonel and Admiral were instead reserved and filled by non-clones like Admiral Yularen, Coburn, or Killian. And that'll do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like and share it along with subscribing to the channel to not only support it, but keep up with Star Wars news, gaming, and canon lore released every week. And consider following me on Twitter and Facebook to never miss out on the latest Star Wars related content. And if you want to further support the channel, then check out our Patreon page to become a Knight of Silo, or click the YouTube join button to join the Silo fleet. Or if you want to continue the conversation, then join us on the official Silo Discord server. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you.